Hi, and welcome to Preview. My name is Guy Giampopo. Preview. 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 Five, four, three, two, one. Cue Guy. Hello and welcome to Preview. My name is Guy Giampapa. Don't dress for dinner in theater. A farce is usually a series of misunderstandings. A perfect example of this is Walpole Footlighter's current offering called Don't Dress for Dinner. It's actually a laugh a minute as the two male leads, Bernard and his friend Robert, plan a gourmet dinner for Bernard's mistress while his wife Jacqueline is planning to visit her mother. A female cook is hired for the dinner. When Jacqueline decides not to visit her mother, Bernard convinces the cook to pretend she's Robert's lover. Not a good idea since Jacqueline is Robert's mistress. When Bernard's girlfriend enters, she is told she must pretend to be the cook. Are you still with me? The evening is about to become a total disaster as everyone's alibi gets shot down. The play is actually a laugh a minute as anchor Mark Camilletti, along with an adaptation by Robert Howden, brings us an evening of fun and laughter. The cast includes Dan Kirichok, Anne-Marie Weaver, Peter McElhenney, Emily Murray, Ashley Harmon, and Andrew Bradley. Direction was by Dan Delaporta. The set design was created by Dan Sheehan, and the backstage crew did their usual fine job. The Footlighters have given us a play that is hilarious and sure to keep you laughing as you enter the theater. Don't Dress for Dinner gets my approval as an enjoyable evening in the theater. Well, Hand to God, Speakeasy Stage Company's production is a story about a young man who is fascinated with hand puppetry. His widowed mother runs the Christian puppet ministry at the local church. You would think this is a tale of children enjoying the fun of creating imaginary creatures who come to life. Not so. Remember Kukla, Fran, and Ollie and the pleasures they gave us? Well, Hand to God is not exactly fun and games. As a matter of fact, it is a play not for children. It's strictly adult and the language and some disturbing scenes between the adults is questionable. It's actually a dark comedy. Aside from that, Hand to God was written by Robert Askins, a man who as a child grew up to be a rebellious soul. His thoughts are reflected in this story. The skilled performances of five actors is worth noting. Elliot Purcell is the young man, Jason, who attempts to control the puppet Tyrone. His performance is so strong, I believe he will be an Ernie winner next year. His manipulations with the puppet are worth the price of admission. His mother is played by Mariana Bassam, and she is terrific. Timothy, played by Dario Ladani Sanchez, is the young man who has his eye on mother. Uh, Josephine Eldwood is Jessica, and she cares for Jason. Rounding out the cast is Louis D. Wheeler as Pastor Greg, a man of the church who has the task of keeping order within the ministry. While this play is not for a timid audience, it is actually about good and evil and sex and sin. It's daring and outrageous and worth seeing. Hand to God at the Speakeasy Stage Company. Once upon a time, the three commercial television stations in Boston employed critics to talk about the entertainment business in the Boston area. These critics reviewed films, theater, and much of the nightlife. These critics were female, each with a style of her own. Joyce Culhaywick worked at WBZ-TV, and she attended just about every opening of every musical and drama that came into the city. Joyce Culhaywick continues to review arts and entertainment and still advances the arts and entertainment, and she is president of the Elliot Norton Theatre Awards. I've had the pleasure of knowing these three ladies and have chatted with them on this program with my then co-host, Don LaTulip. Some of you remember, might remember seeing this on the program. For those of you who have not and those who would like a second look, we have prepared a few segments from shows of the past featuring these ladies. So sit back and enjoy a look into the past with three charming ladies and two enjoyable hosts lucky enough to chat with them. Now you've had a long career here in Boston. Yes, Three I have. Years. That's <laughs> about a long 150 time. years. <laughs> it seems yes, like. Yeah. But it's been a wonderful career, hasn't it's it? It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really didn't expect that that would be my career. I actually studied to be an English teacher, yeah. majored in English, minored in music, and uh, actually taught for a couple of years mm -hmm. and just didn't like it. I, I just, I'm not a morning person. <laughs> I didn't like all the paperwork. <laughs> The discipline problems, oh, high school it. English, it was tough. Yeah. I was very young, actually. The first uh, couple of months that I taught, I got asked out to the junior prom. Oh, I mean, I really? had to explain I was a teacher there wow. and couldn't go. But it was after that that I uh, quit my job and then heard about this audition for a new show called Evening Magazine and auditioned and they hired me out of just with no experience out on of the evening box. magazine I on didn't evening know that. magazine yeah wow. 1978 that yeah. was robin young marty sender mm -hmm. were the original co-hosts oh, yes. yeah, of that yeah. show 
and probably a lot of your audience remembers them, but that was the first real TV magazine show ever on the air. That's right. That's right. And I remember seeing it on television thinking, oh, that looks like something I could do, but <laughs> what do you know? I ended up doing it that and then about, transitioned into news. That, that was about the time that Entertainment Tonight started and then the entertainment show. Entertainment started Tonight started in 81, which yeah. is exactly when I was promoted into mm -hmm. news to be okay. the arts and entertainment critic. At four. At, at Channel, Channel 4. Four. I yeah. only ever worked at yeah. Channel 4. I yeah. did other things simultaneously. Yeah. You know, yeah. I took a flyer and did a year with Roger Ebert. I had a yeah. syndicated uh, movie review show with Leonard Maltin called Hot Ticket. Mm -hmm. But I did all of those things while I was still working at Channel 4. That was yeah. home base yeah. for me. Joyce, in all the interviews you've done, and yes. I know you've done hundreds oh, of Oh, yeah, them, a lot. What would you consider your best or your favorite <laughs> or is it is it possible? I have, yeah. I mean, there there are a couple that pop out for me. Uh, mm. My best, hard to say. You know, anytime I talk to Meryl Streep is a great oh, day. God love wow. her because she is She's, the whole package. I mean, she is tr iconic, truly. Not the way they throw that word mm. around now. I mean, she defines what acting really mm. is. Every everybody just looks up to her. She owns yeah. the space wherever she is. She's also incredibly down to earth and unpretentious. Yes. Yeah. She's also extraordinarily articulate and intelligent. Mm -hmm. And she is very open in an interview. When I say down to earth, no matter who she's talking to, for whatever reason, she is completely available to you and really has the conversa conversation. And that is not something you can say about everybody. That's Some true. people are just going through yeah. the motions. Uh, some oh, people artificial. are just pure, they're yeah. official, or they have nothing to yeah. say, they're so boring. No, Meryl is alive and awake and having the experience right in front of you. So she's And she's gorgeous on camera. I mean, mm -hmm. like mirrors in her skin or something. She just reflects the light. Yeah. So she's always a, a great person to talk to. But the one that I think really stands out the most is Rudolf Nureyev. Talking to another icon, you know, a man who defined what it was to be a ballet dancer. And I had a very interesting interview with him. I flew out to Saratoga to interview him before he came to Boston so we could scoop everybody. And they said, yes, come out and do the interview. And so I landed by helicopter <laughs> at Saratoga. Wow. And they said, okay, well, we'll go ask Mr. Nureyev. And I said, ask him. I I'm here. You know, hmm. BZ has already paid for the trip, and we're counting on this. Well, he's very particular. And so I thought, oh, no, this is one of those. So I saw her go up to him. and. He's looking over his shoulder at me while she's talking to him, and he, she turns around, comes back, and says, well, he's agreed to do the interview, but only 10 minutes. And by the way, you better be good, because if he's bored, he's going to get up and walk away. And I thought, oh, gosh, not too much pressure. So we get out on the lawn. We sit in these two lawn chairs, and we have a great conversation. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, <laughs> 20 minutes. And I'm thinking, wow, I better end it here while things are going well. So I leaned over. And I said, Mr. Nureyev, thank you so much for this great interview. And he leaned over and put out his hand. I leaned over and put out my hand. I leaned back in my chair and kept right on going. <laughs> so right oh, over no. backwards, my legs flying <laughs> by the camera. And I'm lying on the ground in front of the most graceful oh, man in the world. And everybody's screaming, Joyce, get up, get up. <laughs> and I look over, and Nureyev is laughing so hard, he's almost falling out of his chair. And I said, well, if Mr. Nureyev would stop laughing and help me up. And he reaches out. Out, I reach out oh. my hand, he lifts me up and says, ah, oh, an arabesque. Oh, wow. <laughs> I said, oh, you can borrow that anytime you like. <laughs> Just like Miss Fontaine. You yeah. Got, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Margo. Yeah. Margo. Yeah. What a know. wonderful duo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. I had a terrible interview once with John Travolta, who got so mad at me. And it was, it was actually my fault. Well, you know what? I think we can share the blame on this one. But I was kind of young, and I was trying to ask him how he kept his footing in a business that was very up and down. Mm -hmm. You can have a hit one day and a, you know, a terrible crashing failure the next. So I said to him, so, <laughs> Mr. Travolta, you've had some big hits in your career. And you've also had some bombs. Well, when I said the word bomb, he exploded. He said, what bombs? There have been no bombs. Oh. And I thought, well, he must have forgotten about Moment by Moment with Lily Tomlin, yeah. which could be the terrible. worst film mm -hmm. on the face of the earth. So uh, he just said, oh, you people, you're always looking for the dirt and the negative side. And I said, no, no, I, 
I said, let me rephrase. Uh, you've had some movies that have been some very successful and others that have been less successful. He said, oh, there you go again. Anyway, we finished the interview up, and I said, okay, well, I'm going back to Boston. He said, go, go, just oh leave. My. It was terrible. Oh, <laughs> I, worked with I realized that if I didn't really tell the truth, I mean, in a respectful way, mm. and it keeps you honest, too, actually. Right in a respectful way, then people wouldn't trust me. If, the, if I didn't tell what I really thought mm. about a thing, they wouldn't trust me because I knew people were going to go and they were going to see it. And people know garbage when they see it. They really do. Yeah, they do. In, down deep. So if I were to get up there and say, oh, it was wonderful, it was this, it was that, and they went to see it and I, they'd see what I saw, I knew they'd catch me and call me out. And I thought, no, I owe my viewers my real honest take on what I've experienced. And I thought any actors and producers um, and any honest company wants an honest review. So this is how I set That's it up great. with myself. That's very good. I mean, there's a way to say certain things. I mean, you know, as I discovered with John Travolta, the mm -hmm. hard way, you know, you don't have to say bomb. That, right. could be, that could be an emotionally explosive word. But I think people know when you're saying, hey, you know that the script could have been better, yeah. wasn't worthy of those, those two stars, yeah, and actually this is sort of coming back to me now. You know, this, they're clearly treading on, you know, old stuff here, yeah. and they can do better. I mean, yeah. I really want to talk about how an actor acts. I want to talk about uh, what's meaningful to a person, what's a turning point, point in their life. Uh, I'm always excavating for meaning. You know, to me this is exciting mm -hmm. and thrilling, and it's what I've always done. And I think uh, artists have a lot to say to us about what they do. So, you know, that's what interests me. I mean, when, when Ben Affleck, for example, canceled his wedding, mm. or when, when the wedding stopped, oh, yeah. let's, I don't know who canceled, but I reported that. That was a big was sort a story, of, yeah. it was a story, but that was it, day one. The next day they wanted me to do a follow-up, and I said, well, what's the, you know, what's the story? Still broken up? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> speculation, rumor? No, I'm, I'm not doing that story. And so it would stop there. Thank you so much, it, Guy and Don. It's, yeah. it's really been a pleasure having you here. Thank you. You're, you're the last of the, the great theater and movie <laughs> reviewers. On God, television. I hope not. <laughs> no. well, and I'm not done yet. You're not over. When yeah. I've got my next project, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. Over at Channel 7, Sarah Edwards held court for several years. She came to Boston from Los Angeles with a style of her own, captured her viewers with her charm and good looks. Well, what have you been doing to yourself lately? You know, I still freelance. Channel 7 officially let me go in June. Mm -hmm. And it was real. They eliminated the entertainment department. It was really yeah. for financial reasons. And I have to tell you, I was stunned at the time. But I understand it now. And it certainly has given me time to really breathe a little bit. Because I was going nonstop for the 12 years I was yeah. there. And what... what kept on through that because you know Channel 7's an NBC station mm -hmm. and I was already doing reviews for NBC News Channel right. which I, feeds all of the Yeah, stations. I've seen you on the Providence station. Yeah, and I Channel you know 10. people will say oh I was in Atlanta yeah. and saw you so it's kind of fun. So they wanted to keep me on. So uh, I do movie reviews for them, and I covered the Golden Globes for them, and also uh, the End of Friends. You know, the End of Friends was oh, yeah. taped back uh, in January, yes. so I was there for that. So I still have done some things for them, and I'm also freelancing, hopefully, some radio, and uh, I do a little some some things at Comcast with Barry Nolan, which is oh, great. Fun. Oh, over in my Brooklyn. old partner. Yeah, yeah. if yeah. anybody yeah. remembers yeah. those evening magazines. Oh, days, I do, of course. You know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> when yes. I was ten, remember, <laughs> remember that? Watch of it, John. ten. Now, Barry's quite a talent. He's, he's a great talent. He, really he is does. so smart, and he is one of the funniest guys you will ever meet. I did nothing but laugh for the nine really? years that I did the <laughs> magazine. And you know, it still hasn't stopped. Boston's a great time. market. It it's really a great truly market. Is. Everywhere yeah. you go, too, when I, when, if I yeah. go out to Hollywood to do interviews, the stars find out you're from Boston. And there's always a mystique about mm. it. You know, oh, what's it like? How's the seafood? You know, I, oh, I got to go visit. So it's, it's kind of fun. To, to be able it's, to say you're and it's a great production town now. Oh, look at all the movies that have been filmed here. Recent, I know. Most, most recent, Mystic River. Mystic River, River yeah. which uh, is nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, uh, we'll right. probably not win, but I think Sean Penn could get an Oscar. Let's, I, I'm let's with hope you knock on, on wood. Yeah, yeah, he was great. Well, he with all the personalities you've interviewed, do you have a favorite story with one of them? Uh, you know, Robin Williams. Robin oh. Williams is the absolute best. And I remember, it was my first interview with him, so I didn't know what to expect. And I was wearing a bright orange silk suit. And he was doing the movie, I think it was called Father's Day with Billy Crystal. Not a great film, but hey, I, I got to that. interview Robin sure, Williams. Of course. So I walked in and I said, hi, how are you doing? I was kind of nervous. And I sat down and he kept looking at me. 
And then when the camera rolls, I asked him a question. He totally ignored it because he was looking at this bright green outfit. And he said, oh, my <laughs> little cup of sherbet. <laughs> Ooh, you tangerine, you, you know, he would not stop talking about the suit. And I tried to go on to other questions, and I remember saying, oh, Entertainment Weekly has called you the Tasmanian devil of comedy. With that, he jumps up and screams, you know, ah, ah, Tasmanian devil sits on my lap for most of the interview. <laughs> I still have never gotten over it. I think I left there stunned. But it was so much fun, and there are not many stars that will do that with That's you. Right. You'll interview mm -hmm. with Steve Martin, who's funny on camera, yeah. but will just sit there and go, mm-hmm, yeah, I really, I really like the role. He's very serious. This is not funny. Key. You know, some of them just are better. They come alive when the red light goes on. But Robin Williams, yeah, I yeah. think it's nonstop. See, yeah. It makes your, your work a lot easier. Oh, it does. You can a, just sit yeah. there and let him go. Mm -hmm. um, who did I interview recently that was tough? You know, do you remember, a, is it Jillian Anderson? Do I have her name yes, right from X-Files? Yes. She was a local girl. <laughs> she was tough. Was she I don't know. Tough, maybe really? I just caught her in a bad mood. But she, you know, you... When they do these film junkets, they'll talk to 60 journalists in right. a day. And if you yeah. get them right before lunch or at the end, they're tired. And they're sort of yeah. like, so she was like this Sluggish. with me. Yeah. Um, and I just interviewed Ashley Judd for a new movie, Twisted. And oh. I had her at the end of the day. And she tried to rally for me. But they're tired. So I found myself, I saw the tapes later, I am manic. I'm going, so Ashley, tell me. And I realized yeah. what I was trying to do was get her energy level up. Mm. And I thought, oh, this is just, Im you would never <laughs> teach a student at communications to do an right. interview this way. But sometimes you have to kind of rise to the occasion. What star from the 30s and 40s could make it in the movies today? Could make it? Oh, could Catherine make. Hepburn, without a doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Spencer Absolutely. Tracy. Oh, Spencer Tracy. Could I think Cary Grant, because I think George Clooney sort of is Cary yeah, Grant. Yeah, well, he's yeah. eternal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I liked Robert Mitchell. I loved, I tell you who I loved, mm. William Holden. Yeah. But he had the kind of a smooth, low-key style that I think could translate a mm -hmm. little bit. But I will say about those actors back then, there wasn't the same kind of versatility. Often you'll see actors today taking on so many different kinds of roles. Look at an Al Pacino. Yeah. You know, some of the char great character actors. I think back then you sort of were Katherine Hepburn. And you were Cary Grant. And now I do think with a Johnny Depp and actors like that, they have They're taken it a little farther yeah. in uh, being versatile. But I think what they lack, on the other hand, is that big, big screen persona that mm. would just draw you to a movie yeah. with some yeah. of these stars. What, uh, would you go to see a movie because it was a Johnny Depp movie? Yes. You would? Okay. I'll go to a movie if it's Gene Hackman, Johnny Depp, Denzel Washington. Uh, there's certain people I will just, Susan Sarandon I love. Yeah. I grew up, and this is why I love what I do, because I just grew up uh, watching movies and also um, we were talking about uh, TV and old shows earlier and mm. my dad loved Jack Parr and, oh, and yes. Sid Caesar yeah. and I was, you know, about two, I really don't remember those shows, <laughs> but I, they were so hooked on them. We'd all sit around the TV yeah. and I just appreciated that, that comedy back then. there. But Brad no, Garrett, no. I have interviewed him have for, really? for some film roles, and oh, he's so funny, but I couldn't use one word oh. of the interview. Oh, really? Because it's all very, yeah, X-rated. Oh, no. oh, too bad. He's hysterical, yeah. and he does it on purpose, because he voiced something for um, Finding Nemo. Uh, yeah. He voiced yeah. one of the characters, and, uh, the, and he, taught, he knows it's a Disney film, so he likes to kind of stick it to Wasn't Michael Eisner and just <laughs> gives you an interview you can't use. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I, 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 can't even, I can't even begin to tell you what he said. I was rolling on the floor and couldn't use one <laughs> word of it. Brad Garrett. Yeah. You know, I covered the end of Friends. And, mm. I, uh, it, I mean, you won't see the last episode till May. Right. But I was there when they were doing it. Yeah. And uh, Matt LeBlanc, I don't know. I think the jury's out on how just Joey by himself will do. That's such an ensemble cast. Well, you know, the, the question is, uh, what's going to happen to that entire cast yeah. once Friends die? Right. You know, you, you might get, well, Jennifer Aniston has a, she's got a movie career. Yeah. Well, yeah. What about the others? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't, don't know. know. I, I, I think it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. Yeah. Matthew Perry has tried movies, hasn't always mm. worked. I wish them well, though. They're all pretty funny. And yeah, and, you know, a lot of shows have failed. For instance, the uh, Greek Wedding, that that movie. Yeah. And I said, yeah. the mm. first Big episode. Not that I'm anything special. I said to my friend Matthew, we're watching it together. That show's going to fail because they're using a laugh track. And the laugh track doesn't react. It doesn't work, yeah. it doesn't work with any shows. No, no. It doesn't. I it's it really all. sad. Lucy had uh, had a live audience, you right. know. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and Raymond the has a live audience. Oh, you'd have to. You have you to have, have to. a live audience. 
because otherwise it just falls flat. Absolutely. You can hear the canned laughter. Yeah. It doesn't work. It's, it's, like, we're out of time, it's like one big conversation here. I, know, I like this. I know. Yeah. I have to have you back <laughs> so that you can. We'll bring in coffee next time. And really okay. Do it up. Do former, and the former host of entertainment tonight, Dixie Watley, also came from Los Angeles to make her mark at WCVB TV. After several years of employment, Dixie left her position as the arts and entertainment editor. An announcement from the station at her departure was a mutually amicable agreement. She was not replaced, and the arts and entertainment segment on the news was eliminated. Dixie Watley remained in the Boston area and became a well-known sculptor. That's true. I started when I was three in commercial. No, I'm kidding. Of okay. That was 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, so it was not the I'm going to pick up roots from you know, Louisiana mm -hmm. and trek on out to right. L.A. I was already there, already which there. made it a little bit easier. You didn't realize how tough it was supposed to be until you started talking to people and realizing what they had to do to move out there, just cold, and try and get into the entertainment industry. You weren't always an entertainment reporter. Did you no. do newscasts at one time? I have a master's in journalism, okay. and I was a news reporter in L.A. Yeah. and an anchor. And mm -hmm. uh, at one point when I was anchoring, a, um, a guy at Paramount called me seen me anchoring and said, we have this new show called Entertainment Tonight, which nobody had ever heard of, and uh, we wanted to have more of a news feel. It had been on the air for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and it was like Three Ring Circus. So he called me, and I walked in, and I had the job, and I didn't, didn't even know what the job was. I thought I was reporting or something, and all of a sudden, here I am anchoring. They canned the anchor woman, or the host, it was hosting, and the producer had quit in a fury because he hadn't been consulted. So I'm walking in as the new girl, oh, and everybody wow. is is fit to be tied because the producer they loved quit because of the you know. And what do I know? Here I am. <laughs> so it, it was it was an adventure. Was it fun? Oh, I it there were fun moments, uh, but. I think an adventure is the way, <laughs> yeah, the way to describe it. Five years worth of adventure it there. Worked. And I was replaced by Mary Hart, and I get mm -hmm. and I, I saw her about a year ago and said, you know, the funny because you know we're friends. Uh, I said, you, the, the thing is, if you have to get fired or demoted as I was and replaced, at least I'm being replaced by somebody who's sat in the chair for 20 years. That's right. That it's yeah. not like they blew her out and then brought in somebody else two months later. So. To me, it seemed, you know, she was supposed to be there. No, it wasn't happy camper time, mm -hmm. but things happen. But in, that, in the beginning, that was 1981, mm -hmm. you know, they, they were constantly changing. There was another girl, a brunette, who married the fellow from Love Boat, and then she retired. Oh, she was, she was one of the mean? reporters, Kathy Mann. Yeah, Kathy mm -hmm. Mann, yeah. yeah. She was a reporter, and she had, <laughs> I, you know, you have a million stories. That, that one of hers yeah. is the funniest. <laughs> Robert Mitchum, who was, he would just, when you managed to corner him, he would just swear a blue streak <laughs> so that you couldn't use it. Or I had to talk to him for Winds of War, and he kept talking about he 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 wanted to he was in the uh, you know the army as a proctologist, and he'd go you know and it's like what are you Come talking? On. <laughs> just so you wouldn't use it. So he's sitting there with with Kathy, and he's you know f this and s that, and oh just a blue streak purposely. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so instead of just not airing it, which is of course what he wanted, they just beeped them all. And he looked like an idiot. Oh, I'll bet he did. Because yeah. every, it was a beep every other word. And it was like, okay, you're going to be a jerk? Well, we'll show everybody what jerk you are. And it was funny as heck. She kept her cool, too. Yeah. He was drunk all the time. Yeah. Well, that they, there are a couple, you know, there's always running jokes mm. in the entertainment industry. Never talk to Robert Mitchum after 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that was one of them. Because certain people had certain habits, and you just, you know, you didn't want to get bogged down mm. in them. And that was an infamous one. And when he got his star on Hollywood Boulevard, though, he had a news conference, and that was about 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and he entertained the press for like two hours. Wow. We were all completely agog, because he never did, never did things like that. But he was having fun. It wasn't one-to-one. -one, yeah. So it was sort of a performance, if you will. And everybody, of course, was being wonderfully nice, because he'd gotten the star. So it was one of the few. Re and at, another, at a People's Choice Awards once, I remember walking in, and this was in the evening, amazing. There was a little girl there who looked a little lost and he got down on his knees with her and was, honey, are you okay? And let me help you. He was so sweet. So you knew there's a nice guy under there. It's just, you know, so many of them really hate to be interviewed, yeah. really hate the whole press corps, had been bad mouth. Once Cary Grant I went up to with a mic who was notorious for not wanting to do interviews and he was so charming. And, <laughs> oh, young lady, what can I do for you? And she grabbed really? the mic and shoved it down. Uh. And I said, Mr. Grant, couldn't you just give me a, a comment? It was the opening of Universal Amphitheater, and you know, Sinatra was singing or something. And he goes, I'm sorry, I don't do interviews. And we had this wonderful, delightful conversation, but I couldn't talk him into giving me an interview. Danny Kaye was like that. Ooh. 
He was awful. my first interview at Entertainment Tonight. Oh, tell me about it. Oh, my heavens. Ugh. My producer had already warned me. He said, Danny Kaye, who, um, for, for those of you who don't know, Secret Life of Walter Mitty, mm -hmm. he was a, a comedian and very funny and charming, mm -hmm. but he really had a rep. And my producer had had a full plate of food thrown at him by Danny Kaye. He ducked. Wow. The producer. Uh, because Kaye didn't like something very minute. So I was told the day before that I had to do an interview on a mini-series he'd done called Skokie about yes, the uh, marches in Skokie, in Illinois. Illinois. Well, it was a six-hour mini-series. I was told the day before I did manage to watch four hours. And it was, you know, he won't talk to you if you didn't see it. So I'm frantically watching mm. this thing. And I thought, well, I've got to be honest. So I write out of the box, said, look, I was told yesterday I've seen four hours of this. And he just about got up and left. And I thought, what do you want? And everything I wanted to talk about, Chinese cooking, nope. Conducting, nope. Just wanted to talk about Skokie. But the funniest part was when I first met him. I'm sitting in the couch, and we're waiting, 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 and his assistant's across from me, and all of a sudden she looks up and kind of stiffens. And I turn around, and he walks in a red jumpsuit, red slippers, <laughs> like go-to-sleep slippers, um, <laughs> and a red beret. And he looks fairly idiotic. None of the reds were the same color. Comes up to me and walks up to me and goes, on the top of my head. And I looked up at, at him and said, does this mean I've been blessed? <laughs> and he laughed. So at least we got off to it quasi, you know, he's, yeah. he's out to freak me out. Which he did actually, yeah. but you have to try not to show yeah, he's it. He's never been kind to the press. Yeah. I, I remember well, a few They probably minutes. haven't been real sweet to him too, oh, too a few possible, times. Yeah. So when I first started, I remember somebody once told me to go be a, be a weather girl. Real, when I was in college, oh. you know, real early on, and I later, this man was a reporter, and I later saw him when I was reporting, and he looked at me and he goes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was quite glad that I ended up going into entertainment-oriented things, because I was going to be a newsie. Uh, what's the name like Dixie? I was once told by a guy who had been the news director at the CBS station in L.A., and then at that point was the GM of... Uh, of a station in Chicago, and we were having a drink. We'd known each other for years, and he says, you know, I used to think you were a real good news anchor, but who'd believe somebody named Dixie? <laughs> and I thought, excuse me, your wife, Royal, is a national <laughs> correspondent. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. But, you know, that's true. Koki Roberts. Who I know, yeah, like that's Koki. a great one. I can see them at the end well. In those days, it was fun and fluff, but today it isn't. Entertainment news is very important today. Yet it's Look ironic, it isn't it? Yeah. Um, I no longer work at, uh, at a, a network affiliate right. here. Sarah Edwards no longer right. works at the, yeah. at the network affiliate. And the reality is that uh, this was a very strange place in that way. Mm. New York, L.A., Chicago maybe have entertainment correspondence. Mm. No place else does. In fact, L.A., has the NBC station there, has never really had a full-time entertainment person. Can you imagine in Los Angeles? Wow, the but entertainment capital. I, I did write and illustrate for the Los Angeles Times for about six years mm -hmm. while I was moving up in TV, and I'd do entertainment tonight and go over to wow. the Times and draw at midnight on somebody's desk with me and the guys running the press. Well, we've been talking with Dixie Watley, and she's a delight. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, segment with those three ladies. That's preview for this time. See you next time. Bye-bye.